What's up everyone, Alan Thrall here, feeling moist. If you guys wanna get your hands on one of these awesome t-shirts, I don't know why you wouldn't. I'll include a link down in the description area for you to follow if you could pick yourself up one. So shortly after this, the rain came pouring down out of nowhere. Shall I say, the weather became a bit too moist. I couldn't go in the gym and record because it was too loud, so I'm just gonna give you some audio. I'm gonna play some B-roll of some old footage of Untamed Strength 1.0 and Untamed Strength 2.0 and a little bit of Untamed Strength 3.0, as well as some events that happened in Untamed Strength while I explain this video. So I'm the owner of Untamed Strength, which is a strongman and powerlifting gym located in Sacramento, California. It's been in business for almost four years now, so while I am still pretty green as a business owner, I've learned quite a few things thus far. So I'm gonna share with you three tips that you need to know if you're planning on opening your own gym or business. Tip number one, you need to know your target market or audience. Who are you trying to attract? Who are you trying to help? Who are you creating your product or your service for? Who do you want using your facility? Knowing your audience and your niche will give you some direction. Now with that, you have to realize that you can't please everyone and that's okay. If you try to please everyone, you'll end up with a watered down service, product or facility that ends up really pleasing no one. You'll be good at many things and great at nothing. When I first opened up Untamed Strength, I made the mistake of trying to please everyone. I didn't want to miss any opportunity. My business card said powerlifting, strongman, Olympic weightlifting, general strength training, athletic training, weight loss, fitness, pretty much everything under the sun. This confused a lot of potential clients because they were kind of unsure of what I had to offer. This also led to some headaches for me because I was training some people that didn't want to do what I wanted to teach. They'd ask why we always focused uh, so much on the squat and the deadlift and they'd say, can we not do all of that? I don't want to work with anyone who's not willing to train with a barbell. I should have let them know when they walked in the door. Nowadays when people show up, I let them know that this is a strength gym and that I can help them get stronger using basic barbell movements and strongman equipment if they're into that. I don't promise anything that I can't deliver. It's important to know what you can do and what you can't do. Run with your strengths. Figure out who you want to attract and create the best product, service, or facility for them. Now, with all that said, realize that your audience might change or your product might shift direction and that's okay. If what you're doing is not working, you have to be able to adapt. Just make sure that you give it your best effort before moving on. If you only want to train high school wrestlers and an entire football team walks into your empty gym looking for training and they're willing to pay you enough money to make this month's rent, you need to train football players. My point is, don't try to train football players if your experience is in prepping physique competitors for a show. It wasn't until I hosted my first strongman competition that I realized I had a decent strongman gym. That was what set me apart from every other gym in the area. After the big turnout at the competition, I started hosting free strongman Saturdays and people who wanted to train strongman came pouring in. I stopped trying to please or attract powerlifters, Olympic weightlifters, and anyone else that didn't want to train strongman. I went after people who wanted to compete in a strongman competition or people who were tired of boring routines at their commercial gym. A lot of people really didn't enjoy sitting at a desk all day, then going into an air-conditioned gym and sitting on a shiny machine for an hour. People had a lot of fun being outside, getting dirty, and getting a great workout. Most of my strongman equipment was cheap and I got it for free because it was just junk. So it was easy for me to continue building. It wasn't until I actually started making money almost two years later that I was able to buy better squat racks, actual power bars, more plates, and competition benches that the power lifters started showing up. Most power lifters are princesses who need special bars and squat racks with certain specs so it can be hard to please them without the right equipment but that's Another story. Now Untamed Strength is advertised as a powerlifting and strongman gym because that's who I want to attract. Tip number two, give away a lot of free stuff. People often make the mistake of asking for $100 to join this gym or buy this programming promising that it will help you. And my response is, how will it help? Why should I believe you? You have to show people why they should buy your service, your product, or a membership. People love free stuff. It eliminates one of the biggest excuses why not to do something. The reason Costco gives away so many samples is because they are free. 
If they started charging 10 cents per sample, I bet they wouldn't give away half the samples they currently give away. Even though it's only 10 cents, people don't want to search for a dime. They don't want to give you a dollar and wait to receive their change. They want free because it's easy. Costco wants to give away free samples because it leads to people wanting more. Once they've convinced you that you like this product, they'll know you'll end up buying a box. You have to show people that you are worth their money. The first month of Untamed Strength was completely free. I wanted to get people in the door without them having to worry about paying money. And on a side note, I didn't charge for the first month because I was still learning about coaching, coordinating group workouts, and giving instruction. If it's free, there isn't much expectation. Again, it's free. I used this time to learn and get better. When I started making YouTube videos, I did it as a way to promote Untamed Strength. The mistake was thinking that people cared about Untamed Strength. I'm wanting people to sign up for my gym without giving them anything. And it wasn't until I started making informational, instructional content that was helping people that my channel and eventually my gym started getting traffic. YouTube is free content. I had to establish myself and let people know that I could help them by giving away free information and showing them. Most people look at giving away free products or services as a loss. It's not a loss if it ends up getting you customers later down the road. You might not see an immediate return on your time and effort. Oh, I just trained this guy for an hour for free. What a waste of time. If your product or service is good, he'll come back. He'll tell a friend or he'll write a review. Learn from each free experience and assess what was good and what was bad. If you wanna make $300 an hour training someone, you are not gonna start there you might have to train people for free before you can charge $10 an hour. If you want to charge people thousands of dollars to listen to you talk on a stage, you're going to have to talk in front of people for free for a long time at first. Use this free time to practice your craft or refine your product. What did people like? What did people hate? Why aren't people coming back? Once the demand for your time or product raises, then you can charge what you're worth. If you're thinking about starting your own gym or training facility, I'd suggest filling your garage or even a storage facility full of equipment and letting people train there. This keeps overhead low or even non-existent while you build some potential customers and clients. This is a much easier approach than signing a lease for a $2,000 per month warehouse with zero customers. And tip number three, treat everyone as if they were your most important customer. A lot of people have this all or nothing mentality of business or even life. They have their dream gym, restaurant, clothing line, or whatever it is in mind. If they can't have that right off the bat, it's not worth pursuing. If you want a gym with 200 members, you're gonna have to start with one. Unless you are already a millionaire and you can open an establishment outfitted with top of the line equipment, or a facility that sells itself, most of us startups can't do that. We have to start from the bottom. We have to convince people to purchase a membership. We have to work hard to sell our business. My initial location at Untamed Strength was definitely not my dream gym, but it was what I could afford at the time. It was where I had to start. There were plenty of times when I would have plans for an awesome strongman workout. I'd spend 45 minutes dragging equipment outside and setting up training stations, only to have one person show up. I'll admit that this always left me a bit down in the dumps. I'm human. It did bother me. And I was embarrassed because this one person would wonder why they're the only one showing up there. An empty restaurant on a Saturday night is usually a red flag that this place must suck. I quickly had to stop feeling sorry for myself and realize that I had to make an impression on this one person. I tried to turn things around and convince this person that this is an awesome situation. Now I can focus on you. This is one-on-one -on -one training. What kind of problems have you been having? What do you need help with? I'm here to help you. I made sure I put all of my energy into the next one hour training session with this one person. Rather than complaining about not having a bunch of business or a bunch of customers or not being where I wanted to be, I had to learn how to be in the moment. I was gonna teach this person something they didn't already know. I had to put on a show and get this one customer coming back for more. It's hard to convince hundreds of people to invest in you if you can't convince one person to. Take pride in your product because it's gonna take care of you. Take care of your members or your YouTube viewers because without them, you have nothing. I'll be the first to admit that I would not be where I am today without my family, my fiance, my current and past members, and my YouTube viewers. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If you guys like the business content, 
please give the video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Until next time, always remember... Tread on time! <laughs>